This is MikeBot. Today I'm going to be showing everyone how to remove the extruder from your P1P. Long story short, my P1P has been nothing short of a lemon. I've replaced every single part in this damn thing. It's a disaster. It's cost me a fortune. It happens. It sucks. Support's been useless. So I just went and bought the replacement parts myself. I've replaced the boards, the cables, you name it. Everything on this thing except the motherboard. So you want to start by unplugging your P1P, make sure it's not plugged in, no power is going to it. Remove the PTFE tubing, then remove the front housing assembly. Unplug it. Once you've unplugged it, you can now start by removing your nozzle. Uh, by the way, make sure you've already uh, unloaded your filament from this before you start or it's going to be very, very messy. So to remove the nozzle, it's two screws. Pretty simple. You're going to need both Allen keys that come with your bamboo. Once the nozzle is removed, go ahead and unscrew the filament cutter. Once that filament cutter has been put aside, be careful. It's razor sharp. It will hurt if you nick yourself with it and you will bleed. So be very careful when removing this filament cutter. You can even just pop the blade out if you want to play it safe. Well, now that the filament cutter is out, the nozzle's out, unplug the remainder of the cables that are connected to the front end uh, assembly there. And then you're basically all clear to remove the extruder gear which is held together by, I think, three screws, maybe four. I can't remember off the top of my head. So go ahead and remove those. And then the extruder gear just pops right out. It also has the filament sensor built in and a couple other things. So be very careful with it. It is fragile. I've replaced it already once before. So next, you need to basically ensure that everything looks all clear and then you're ready to flip around your P1P and proceed to the next portion of this task. So now we're going to remove the rear housing assembly. So there are four screws holding this together. They are tiny screws. Make sure not to lose them. I have done that a few times in the past and had to get new screws. Again, this was a lemon. I really hope you don't have a lemon like I did or it's going to suck. I can't even begin to describe how many issues I have had with my P1P. My other P1P has been great. It's just this second one that I bought. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be in my case. X1C, knock on wood, rock solid. So I'm just going to continue removing the rear housing assembly here. This is pre-recorded and I'm just doing a voiceover by the way, so. So once that rear housing has been unscrewed, it pops right out very easily. Be careful with it, the clips break. Yes, I have replaced that as well because it's fragile. P1P is not a very sturdy machine. Everything is plastic and cheap on it. Hence why the low cost, I guess, uh, for a premium printer. So anyway, carefully turn your printer around like so. And then from here, you want to start by unplugging the uh, extruder motor cable. Uh, by the way, did I say extruder gear at the beginning of this video? I'm replacing the extruder motor. So unplug your extruder motor and then unplug the uh, basically the connection cable that connects the front to the back. Uh, fragile cable, easy to break. Replaced it twice myself already. I've also replaced that PCBA board in the front and the PCBA board in the back twice. They are also fragile, so be careful. So basically the board is held together by three tiny screws. Don't lose them. You need them. Without those, you're screwed. So once that board comes out, you're going to remove your tool head cable. So I have a heavy duty tool head cable. Again, I've replaced it twice. Um, so yours might look a little bit different than mine. So it unplugs very easily. Just be gentle with it. Very careful. It's fragile, just like everything else on the P1P. So now you're going to have your cables basically just hanging there. Try to move them aside. Be very, very gentle with them. Next comes probably the most difficult part of this, and it's removing that plastic bracket in the back. It's held together by, I think, six or seven screws in total. So once you've taken those screws out, you can remove the front housing if you want, like I'm doing here. It's four tiny screws. You don't have to. I did it to be safe, but since I've done it now, I can safely tell you, you don't need to do this next portion that I'm doing here, which is removing that front housing. Once the seven, uh, set, was it six or seven screws are removed from the back, it does pop out. You need to wiggle it around a little bit and be very careful because it's a pain to get those belts back on if they come off. You will have to replace those belts at some point, so this video does apply to that as well. It also applies to replacing the tool head cable and the PCBA boards. Because everything I've done here um, to get that extruder uh, replaced, the extruder motor replaced, uh, is basically uh, everything else has 
to come out. So if you're replacing any of those parts, this video applies to all that as well. So as you're seeing, I'm just wiggling it here slowly and it's going to pop out in just a second here. And the motor is actually on the front part of the housing. There it is. So it's held together by two screws and it was quite a pain in the butt to get it to that level. So as you can see here, I'm pointing at the two screws that are at the front. That PCBA board in the front is also fragile. Don't nick it. Again, I've replaced it once before. And it's hard to believe it's just two tiny screws that hold this motor together. It's heavily over-engineered, but my god does this thing print well when it works. I've had more downtime on this P1P than actual print time. Uh, I wasn't kidding when I said it was a lemon. So here's the motor. Pops right out. Take note of the wires before you pop it out. Uh, they are going to be facing upwards. So here's the old motor, here's the new motor, identical, there's no difference. This motor also goes in the X1C. So as you can see here, wording is down, wire is upwards. So two screws to put it back in, and then we can uh, proceed with reassembling the entire P1P. So now that the motor has been basically reassembled, uh, the new motor has been installed, now it's the painful process of putting everything back together. Um, use my video as reference or just take a ton of pictures to know where everything went. Uh, this is my first time doing this, replacing the motor, and I guessed my entire way through it. Because like I said, I've disassembled this thing so many times, I can probably re... I can make my own printing company at this point because of how complicated this process is. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm putting... I'm re-screwing here the front housing because I unscrewed it. I didn't have to do that and you don't have to do that either so i'm just gonna do, fast forward this portion actually really quickly here so while i was disassembling it i also went an extra step and took apart the clip that holds the ptfe tube from the back uh, i unscrewed it you don't need to do that i just did it just why the hell not i've already ripped this thing apart so many times so you're just gonna see me here reinstalling that little uh clip that basically holds the uh second half of the PTFE uh, cord, or sorry, the PTFE tube. So basically from here, you want to basically uh, wiggle everything back into place, and then you got to put those seven screws in the back, uh, back into where you took them out of, basically. So once the uh, back plastic piece that holds everything together has been screwed back in. You basically want to take your PCBA board, uh, put the uh, heavy duty tool head cable or the tool head cable, whatever you have back in, align it right. I've done this 400 times and I don't think I'm exaggerating that number. I'm going to tell you right now, it is a pain in the ass to put this thing back in if you don't get it lined up properly. I've done it so many times and so much frustration that I can do it with my eyes closed now. So be patient with it. It doesn't go back in very, very smoothly sometimes. There's actually a little um, like a routing area inside where you kind of route the cable through in the back. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you ever have to do this and you'll look back and remember me talking about this part in the video. So once you've placed the PCBA board back in properly, it's three screws that hold it together. The screws are tiny. If they don't fit properly or it angles, you're not doing it right. Stop what you're doing. You're going to damage the board and end up replacing it. It only goes in one way and it has to go in smoothly and perfectly. So once you get that all lined up, the three screws should go in without any effort whatsoever. Once the three screws are back in, plug in the three cables. So you got the um, extruder motor cable, the cable that connects to the front, and then the tool head cable. Uh, put the backing back on and screw it back in with the four tiny screws and then uh, we're ready for the final step So flip your p1p over now and now we're ready to finalize everything on the front part of the uh, machine So now looking at the uh, p1p from the front area You want to basically reinsert the cable uh, that connects the backboard to the front board and then from there, you want to put the extruder gear assembly with the filament sensor and all that stuff back in. Three screws to put it in, get that cable in right. If you don't put that cable in right, you're going to get an error. Same with the cable that connects the front board to the back board. 
It has to be perfect or you're going to have problems. And I mean serious problems. So once everything is perfect cable wise, screw it back in. And then from there, we're going to put the nozzle back on, plug it in, put the filament cutter back in, put the front of the housing back in and uh, we're gonna test and you're good to go basically. So I'm just gonna fast forward through the remainder of this. Basically, you're gonna see me put everything back together and I'm gonna test it off camera. And I'm telling you from now, I tested it before I recorded this and everything came back up properly. Uh, don't worry if you get an error. You now know how to take it apart, take it apart, put it all back together again. Troubleshooting 101. You need to have a green light on the backboard. There's another green light somewhere else you need to look for. The green light doesn't go on, something hasn't been plugged in correctly. So start by playing with the cables if you have an issue. Once that green light on the backboard goes on, you know you're good. Otherwise, whatever HMS error is spit out, uh, go online, figure out what it is, or leave a comment and I'll help you. Like I said, I've taken this thing apart so many times and rebuilt it so many times, I can probably be better customer support than Bamboo themselves right now. So feel free to leave comments below and I will get back to you and help you out as soon as I get an opportunity to. I am not sponsored by Bamboo. I do this because I love this hobby and I love making YouTube videos. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for watching today. Like bot.